Good morning and welcome to another uh, video presentation of Through the Garden Gate. Uh, in we are in conjunction with the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. I am a volunteer there. Uh, Jill Sheets is behind the camera and standing next to me is Kay Anderson. And this is Kay's lovely home. Uh, take a close look at what's around us here. This is a typical home in a typical neighborhood. We're here in East Wenatchee, Washington. Um, it may be typical out front, but part of the reason this is called Through the Garden Gate is Kay is a gardener. She loves to plant, she loves to dig in the dirt, and we've got a surprise for you through the garden gate. So come along. We're now on the west side of Kay's garden. We're just entering through the lovely arborvitae. Uh, Kay, we're on the garden path. Would you mind okay, taking this Okay, we are, to it? and that's what we have. I have paths and I have what I consider rooms. Perfect. And it's about a little shy half, the lot is a little shy half acre, but in a housing development. It was an inside corner, so we really got advantage of a lot. So now I'm sorry that you're almost between seasons because the fall stuff hasn't started yet and the summer stuff is beginning to fade. I a couple, made a couple of mistakes where you have rocks. Mm -hmm. Don't put things that grow things that drop leaves. <laughs> or seeds. Mm -hmm. Or seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, appreciate the things that come up and bloom all the time. And Kay, as we tour your garden, I see there are some found objects, the repurposed objects here. And that is such a nice thing to show people because what is junk in one man's eye is treasure in another. Exactly. So we've just come up the garden path where Kay has replicated a little bit of that forest that she likes to live in, liked to live in. And uh, we talked about being considerate of neighbors and trees and being uh, careful of what you need to plant when you have someone living close by. Uh, on this side is the end of the path. Kay has a uh, vegetable garden up here with a nice seating area. But right here is something a little more uh, eye-catching. We had to stop and, uh, Kay, can you tell us some of your found items well, in first, here? Well, first, my son-in-law's pedal car is over there that has the uh, impatience on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then some other toys are in there. I wanted to point out, hiding here in the shade is one of those loaded endings yes. that you were talking about exactly. that uh, we can get to grow here in hot, dry, Washington State and the ferns and the ferns and also your little volunteers the dogwood and the vine maple probably will offer you beautiful fall color. See I love vine maple. Now mm -hmm. one of the important things to note in this yard when we moved in here everything this was bare land so other than where they put the lawn I put landscape fabric underneath everything so I do not have weeds. Mm -hmm. I mean I have a few weeds that come through every once in a while but I don't have I don't have that problem that I have to take care of. The other thing is is everything in this yard is on drip. Really? And so okay. I can go anywhere at any time for a period of time, like go on vacation and not worry about everything drying up. So nobody needs to drag a sprinkler around. Nobody drags a sprinkler around anywhere. And the reason not all the impatience are in pots is because I didn't have them for the first several years, but the slugs found me. <laughs> and they absolutely love impatience. Yes, they do. So if I put them in pots, they're all on drip. They're all getting water. And slugs also like pasta, which is your favorite plant. Exactly. How, how do you keep the slugs away from your they pasta? Seem to stay, they seem to stay away okay. They seem to do okay. I do okay. Fingers crossed. Now this year, we found a bunny rabbit in our yard. And the bunny rabbit had eaten all my beet tops, all my, uh, I've already harvested potatoes here, but um, had eaten all the tops off everything. And then in the evening would go, in the morning would go down and eat the tops off the corn. <laughs> so we had to get a trap and uh, we caught the bunny. Just so somebody, must've been somebody's Easter bunny. Oh. And um, we took it up to the orchard and looked like, I see there's a few remnants here in the garden. Is this uh, broccoli? No, it's kohlrabi. Kohlrabi, okay. And uh, my daughter told me a couple of years ago that I should try it, and it actually loves it here. And um, see that this uh, cherry tomato is a volunteer. 
All the dill is always a volunteer. You just plant it once and you have it for life. <laughs> kind of like fennel. Then my onions have dried up in there. I need to pull them out. Mm -hmm. Potatoes were here. I usually have lots of cantaloupe, but the uh, bunny rabbit ate all the cantaloupe. I see um, this is not the typical garden that sometimes people picture with the nice straight furrows and the uh, clean soil. Uh, do your grass clippings come up here for... Um, recycling and a little bit of composting here. I put everything here. We've come past Kay's garden and past the stage. Uh, now we're walking down the garden path, heading back towards the, the house. And the one thing I notice here is there is no wasted space. You, you have been able to plant virtually every section of usable space in this yard. Uh, Talk a little bit about your grapes here, Kay, that go along the fence. I have uh, two kinds of grapes. I don't remember exactly what this one is, but it's a seedless green. This is a Concord. When I first planted it, it died. And then a seedling came up and I retrained it up the, the uh, so it can be high. Mm -hmm. This, the birds just decimate. Do they? I eat the ones I can eat and, and let the birds have the ones they want. As we were walking along, we saw something that you normally don't see here in our central Washington. And we had to comment on this. Okay, what's the story on these wonderful giraffes? Well, we were, uh, we go south for the winter and uh, we were in Algodonas, Mexico by Yuma. Mm -hmm. And I saw the big one and we were then traveling with a pickup and, and trailer. So in order to get that home, it went all the way through the back of the trailer and actually drove. <laughs> okay, we walked down the path a little bit from the grapes and uh, you might hear something in the background, some water rushing. Kay just explained to me that the, uh, we're standing next to the headwaters of the East Wenatchee River. Kay, could you talk a little bit about your water feature for us? Well, when we get down to the bottom, you'll see it's about a 75 foot water feature. Mm -hmm the recycling and the pump is down at the bottom and it pumps it up here to the top and then it comes down the, the river and uh, the good thing about this place is I have irrigation water and in this area irrigation water if you had I wouldn't be able to have this yard if it weren't for irrigation water and so for a certain fee a year, I could get to use all the outside water I want. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed in the, uh, the pond here, you prefer not to have fish? We would usually have fish down below, but not up here. Okay. Uh, so are these found rocks that you called in? Some of the big ones okay. were when they were building the, the, uh, the well, for these people, they had some rocks left over and we had paid them just to leave them and then they <laughs> move them around. But every little rock around every place, as we've gone out, out and uh, found them, got brought it back. <laughs> well, it, everything has a story and I see there's also some found items here. There's a, a ball and a duck and a heron over there and some lighting. I imagine this is beautiful in the evening. Besides providing a soothing And see, we have another soothing area over there. Mm -hmm. Interesting, you see those rounds on the wall? Yes. Those used to be uh, inside bicycle tires. Water and gardening and a garden bench, they all go together, don't they? Okay. We're down, we've walked along the stream. We're at the bottom of the pathway now. We're heading back to the house. And uh, can you tell us, this is where the fish normally would live? Yes, because they can't get up the, well, because the pump, you know, pump mm -hmm. is what pumps water up to the top. Sure. And, um, and the, so the fish would live in here, which is really good because they would keep mosquito control and, and that kind of thing, because this does, you can see it's not, it doesn't move very much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's deep enough for them to overwinter deep down there. For that. As we've been walking around the yard, we've seen a lot of unique uh, found objects that Kay's collected over the years. Uh, all of them are fun. Some of them are so unique, we do need to talk about it. 
Okay, can you share what's going on in this corner, please? Well, my daughter found this totem pole, and uh, she just said I had to have it, so she brought it home, because I don't have anything that can bring it home. And it's been there, sitting there for a long time. And then behind is a over a hundred year old stove that was up at the orchard and um, it's come down here. It started to rust out a little bit, but uh, it's still going fine. It's just a nice feature back there. Uh, and and the, the quail like the area? The quail love the area. The quail love the area. And uh, I have my hammock back over there. Perfect. <laughs> And, and what a lovely place to spend the afternoon. The sound of the water, the shade of the garden. You no, know, the, the problem with that is that if you're a gardener, you don't ever feel like you have time to sit down. <laughs> Katie, like me, likes to plant unique plants and different things. And sometimes you just need to throw it against the wall and see if it's gonna, if it's gonna work or not. And Katie, this is an opportunity to tell us about something that has worked that shouldn't. This is a crepe myrtle. It is not supposed to be hardy for this area. And the first couple of years, it died all the way back to the ground. But I put um, grassy grass clippings over the the bottom of it, mm -hmm. and uh, and now it is trying to grow into. Uh, right now, it's a bush, and it'll probably always be a bush. But in a lot of places on the East Coast, in South Carolina, and stuff like that, it's like the tree, the the, the tree. Mm -hmm. But they are so beautiful. They are so absolutely beautiful when they bloom. And now, you can see it goes from pink to purple. I mean, just beautiful. And then it has a berry. And then, and then, the, and do the bees, do the birds like the berries? I see the bees love the you flowers. Know, I don't know because I'm not here in the winter. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you my two beans. I planted lots of beans. My beans have always been planted there, my pole beans. And only two survived and they have filled in that whole space. <laughs> <laughs> I found the same thing with my cucumbers this year. Filled up the whole space. Uh, this is the rose garden rose? Roses and zinnias. And I have another interesting thing about the zinnias this year, particularly the zinnias. I have something eating them to death. This is an inter interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And I would spray, you know, um, bug killer on them and stuff mm -hmm. like that didn't affect them at all. So I'm going to mention YouTube because this is where I go for all of my resources. You're not the only one. And it talked about earwigs. And it turned out to be earwigs. And the, the, the little, the solution to earwigs is you get a little container a little bit of salad oil in the bottom and bury it high its ground and at night they go in there and they die because they can't get out and uh, it works well it works really well okay. so the, the roses you have do you remember the names of them this one well i some of them some of them this one's queen elizabeth okay you always remember queen elizabeth of course and um she is a beauty and i think that one back there is tropicana it's okay. looking pretty faded now, but you can tell by the color. Mm -hmm. And the, the rest, I don't remember what they are, but they've all been here. They were the first thing planted. They were planted out in front between the, where, the, where the Russian sage is. They used to, okay. they used to have the roses out there. Uh, the roses are beautiful. They're healthy. Uh, and they have gorgeous. lots of, uh, and at the beginning, they have a lot of mildew on them. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you know, I had to spray them with well, there whatever concoction I made up that I found on YouTube. <laughs> well, you found it and it worked. <laughs> I did. So, we hope you've enjoyed this tour of Kay's garden. She is Kay our spectacular garden gardener. Uh, you've done a beautiful job with a, a blank canvas. You've turned it into something just lovely. Throughout some other of our episodes, we've talked about working with uh, texture and color and uh, form of plants. Uh, your eye being drawn through the landscape uh, with a plant at the end of a path. It's all here. Kay's, Kay's done it all and you've done it with style. I think you always have to concentrate on making sure you have something that blooms all the time. 
I walk around this yard. It's about probably about a quarter of a mile to walk if I walk on my paths, and it's pretty good exercise. And you do it every morning. You get to see everything that's happening, and it's uh, it's peaceful. It, it surely is. It, it, it's serenity with the water, uh, and walking it every day, you get to see the small changes that I happen do. seasonally or daily in your case sometimes. Uh, I think what Kay was saying too, the mantra is plant the right plant in the right place and it will pay you back in spades. So this is a lady who loves to uh, loves to garden, loves plants. I too believe in plant amnesty. Uh, Kay, we've seen the fruits of your beautiful work. Thank you very much oh, for sharing your garden with us. My pleasure, absolutely.